All right, it's me, Fergus, of the Railway Traction Engine. Uh, and, and pride of the Cement Works too, I might add. And now, every year around this time, we love telling scary stories. Uh, but, well, this this year's story is quite a bit scarier than normal. There are lots of very scary faces indeed, and uh, bright lights and very loud, startling noises. I, I would know I was there. Uh, now, if you think that it might be a bit too scary for you, there's no shame in that, but well, this might not be the right story for you. If you think you'll be all right, though, then, well, I, I suppose I'll just have to tell you. Let me tell you about the time that I met the 13th man. Track maintenance is not the most glamorous job. The engines considered it slow, monotonous, and dull. Fergus, however, was the exception. He relished helping the workmen replace the old rails and ballast, finding it most satisfying. You can't do it right on the wrong rails, he'd say. Without this work, your treasured express couldn't run. The other engines rolled their eyes. If you asked them, Fergus was more than welcome. One evening, Fergus was preparing to take a maintenance train down Edwards Line. Tracks between Lower Sudbury and Upper Brendam needed to be replaced. The workmen loaded their tools into a van, behind which Fergus coupled two trucks of ballast and a flatbed of new rails and sleepers. When all was ready, he pushed the train down the line. By the time they'd reached the station, a dense fog hung in the air. Fergus's lamp shone brightly, and the men set up lights to illuminate the sight. As they worked, Fergus's eyes wandered. The station was dark, and the crossing gates creaked gently. chuckle broke Fergus's trance. That's strange, he thought. I don't remember putting a van there. Fergus! Oh! You've left our tool van behind. Well, I did not, he insisted. It, it, it were right here, at, at the front of the train. Well, it's not there now, replied the workman. Well, well, perhaps you should check inside this van. We need our tools, grumbled the workman, losing his patience. Take us back to the yard at once. When they returned to Edward Station, they found Boko and the missing tool van. It's not like you to leave trucks behind, remarked Boko. I didn't leave it behind, Fergus protested. I... Uh, um, would you like me to take the maintenance train, Boko offered. You seem... Uh, distracted. Oh, uh, I, I, I'm fine, he insisted. The fog must be playing tricks with me eyes. Uh, anyhow, uh, we must be off at once. Uh, urgently now, you silly tool van. Come on. With the tool van in tow, Fergus left the yard once more. For an engine known for his focus on the task at hand, his mind thought only of the strange van. He kept a watchful eye all the way up the line. Now that they were properly equipped, the men worked fast. They replaced the rails at Lower Sudbury and slowly worked their way along the hill towards Upper Brendam. 
All the while, Fergus was quiet. Ah, uh, not to worry, old boy, comforted the driver. We're all a bit forgetful sometimes. Fergus didn't even hear him. He was squinting through the fog towards the head of the train. In front of the ballast trucks was a barely visible grin. Then came a sudden rush of wind. Watch out! Fergus opened an eye to see what had happened, only to find himself face to face with the van and its awful smirk. I don't know who you are, Fergus bellowed, but I've had quite... With one last effort, he stopped at the bottom of the hill. He opened his eyes, and once again, the van was gone. By morning, the fog had cleared, and Boko arrived with the breakdown train. The workman spoke to Fergus. Phew. Oh, that was some mighty wind. It blew one of the ballast trucks over, toppled off the embankment, and now it's in the cow field. The wind must have caught the tool van, too. It pushed you back down the hill. Wind can't blow a loaded truck off the rails, Fergus grunted. And where is the other van? Fergus, we keep telling you there was no other van, except for the one for our tools. Now we must get this mess cleaned up. I'll find that van and wipe the smug smirk off its face, grunted Fergus. No one interrupts my work. <laughs> well, you're not likely to find it, Boko chuckled dryly, but it doesn't exist. Whatever do you mean? Railway men have always been superstitious about the number 13, explained Boko. But that doesn't just apply to engines. When batches of wagons were built, the 13th was always treated with mm, apprehension. Superstitions are nothing but tish tosh, huffed Fergus. Boko ignored him and continued. I heard of a particularly unlucky van, supposedly the 13th in its batch, and misfortune certainly followed it. One night, an engine derailed while moving it to some old sidings. When the crew returned with the crane, the van had, well, vanished. And, Fergus urged, who some say it was broken up, finished Boko, while others swear it's a trickster roaming the rails in the pursuit of mischief. When things go wrong without reason, it's likely the work of the 13th van. Many dismiss it, but you know what you saw. Fergus said nothing. As far-fetched as poltergeist seemed, he couldn't explain how the van moved and disappeared of its own accord. He continued his work with the maintenance crews, but was more focused and alert than ever before. He would never admit to believing in ghosts, but every foggy night he remains on guard, lest he receive a visit from the 13th van. <laughs> Thank you.